Hey everyone, this is Kit Maher and Alex Parnicki. We're here on day two of the Best of Mass barbecue search, which has taken us all the way to Nantucket Island. We got off the ferry around 1130 and we've just had a chance to meet the owners, Denise and Fred of Backyard Barbecue on, in Nantucket. So it's actually right off the High Line Ferry. Behind us you can see the port. I can flip the camera around to show you what we're looking at. It's a beautiful October yes. day, Halloween on Nantucket. Yeah, so people can come right off the ferry this is and a Highline ferry, so it's only a one hour ferry ride. Uh, and it's right off of the dock, off of the port of the ferry. About a 30 second walk to Backyard Barbecue. So yeah, you can go, go along and meet with Denise and she could bring us in and, and show us what it's all about. So you can see we go along the cobblestone streets here. Yeah, that quintessential New England. And it's, it's pretty warm outside today. It's in the 50s, I'd say at least, so no coat. All right, so we're just walking up here to Backyard Barbecue, where yes. we're gonna meet one of the owners, Denise, and then Fred is inside with all the food. Well, the smorgasbord of barbecue for us to try out, so I'm really excited. Yeah. I've been doing Wi-Fi Hey, Denise. Hey, yes, how Denise. are you? Welcome. And hi, Denise, how are you? I'm lovely. So I'd love you to show us around today. Um, first, I mean, can you tell us about how the restaurant came about and uh, what your name symbolizes? Well, um, you know, Fred's always had the uh, you know idea that back, uh, Nantucket needed a little bit of barbecue, and I actually worked in this building for ten years as a previous restaurant. So when this building came available and he wanted to do barbecue, it was just the perfect marriage. And tell, uh, tell us a little bit about the name. Uh, Backyard Barbecue. Uh, the logo kind of encompasses everything that we wanted to uh, portray. Um, the ACK are the call letters for the Nantucket Airport, and we wanted you to feel like you're in our backyard. And then the whiskey jug, just uh, whiskey, beer, barbecue, and the island. I love it. What yeah. else could you need? Yeah. I love it. Yeah, so let's uh, go meet in with the co owner, Fred Basalen, and he can uh, show us about all the awesome food that you guys have. Thanks. Yeah. All right. As you notice, you can hear some blues music lightly in the background. That's yeah. One of the elements, right? World champion. Oh yeah, Red Sox. <laughs> oh, let's get a quick look at the bar. Yeah, we got Miguel at the bar. How are you? All right. And say hello to our opponent friend. Hi, pleasure to meet you. Thanks for coming in today. Thanks right. for having us. So we learned a little bit about about the restaurant and the name, and uh, if you want to tell us a little bit about uh, your process and your inspiration sure. and what makes all this great food so special. All right, well, uh, to start off with, uh, we use 100% uh, um, uh, antibiotic-free chicken program. Uh, our ribs are chairman reserve um, and our brisket is uh, prime so uh, we, we smoke only the highest quality of meats here uh, and then all of our sides uh, and everything that we have here is made in house uh, and we do not own a freezer, we do not own a microwave. So first thing in the morning we're cutting potatoes uh, and then we, they become french fries. So all of them are completely the freshest you can get. Yeah, absolutely. That's great. And so you said that you guys have a pretty special process here with smoking the meat. You guys actually use aged uh, whiskey aged barrels from a distillery in on Nantucket. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah tell us about that. Yeah, yeah. You know, when it comes to barbecue, the one thing that you'll uh, find going through the south is uh, they use what's local. So if you're in Georgia, you're using uh, peach wood, you're using pecan. Uh, if you're in uh, Texas, you're using post oak. You know, things that are local and in that area. In Nantucket, we have scrub brush, we have driftwood, uh, and we have pine trees. So that really isn't too good for smoking. Right. So we really didn't know what direction we were going to go. But before we opened up the place, uh, we took all of our staff to uh, Cisco and Triple Eight Distillery uh, in Nantucket Vineyards. Uh, they're all in the same same little uh, farm area here in Nantucket, uh, and we started to do a tour with them. Well, we went to the Rick House, which is where they store all their barrels of the aging bourbon, aging rum, uh, and then uh, their Notch, which is their their highest uh, uh, brand. And we're doing a tour of it. And I was just thinking, what are they going to use this for? So I asked the owner, Randy Hudson what he uses the barrels for after all of it's done. Because yeah. sometimes they'll use it and they'll make a port wine with something and then maybe they'll do a wood series with their beer and age their beer. I'm like, sure. okay, so when that that's totally spent, when you're not using it anymore, what are you doing with that? Uh, and he said, well, we usually just give it to people if they want to make planters out of it. I said, well, what if, what if we used it to smoke our barbecue here in Nantucket? Uh, and he loved the idea. We've been working with Randy and, uh, and Jay uh, and the Long family up there at the, uh, at the brewery since uh, for five years now using their uh, barrels to smoke with. 
That's yeah, awesome. show us the small cut pieces. So yeah, yeah. So yeah. You guys get them full barrels, and you then use a yeah. sawzall. And so yeah, I use a sawzall, and I cut the barrels down. And if you can see right in the middle, that dark bit right there, that's what they call the uh, devil's cut, right? Uh -huh. So there's the the devil's cut and the angel share. The angel share disappears, and the devil's cut stays in the wood. So when we cut it, we're actually cutting through the cells of this wood and releasing a lot of the uh, bourbon or uh, whiskey or notch. Uh, or whatever has been soaked into there. Mm -hmm. uh, and when you cook it, it gives it a little bit sweeter of a barbecue flavor, uh, even though oak or, or uh, American oak barrels, which have to be used to make bourbon, uh, by themselves aren't very sweet when it comes to the smoke. That's great. That's, and it's awesome that you're using a local wood such as that. Yeah, so, necessity is the mother of invention, right? Yeah, I love Going that. green. Exactly. So, so, Oh, go ahead. So they have a way to dispose of their barrels, giving them to you. Do you guys kind of work and trade where they can come in and, and get some barbecue? And we take care of them. them. Yeah, <laughs> every once in a while on a Sunday, we have these famous nachos that we do. Uh, we'll bring them up there for the staff. Sometimes we'll have them in for dinner. Uh, and they're great about being big supporters of our restaurants. Awesome. That's excellent. Yeah. So moving on to the next tray, what do we have here? Sure. Well, here we have pull-apart buns, and we have our own house-made uh, pickled red onions. Uh, traditional barbecue accoutrement. Uh, we also have our uh, smoked ribs. Uh, we smoke them for uh, four hours and 20 minutes, uh, and then we put a, just a touch of glaze on it to keep the moisture in on the outside. Then we also have our, um, oh, do you want to cut into those? Yeah, sure. Yeah, Feel it. free. Go for it. Yeah, it's nice so and tender. if you want to explain again for our viewers kind of the philosophy of behind fall off the bone ribs, you don't want those, right? Yeah, you know, for years people talk about uh, fall off the bone, juicy, uh, all these terms when it comes to barbecue, but one of the best terms in barbecue is dry. You actually want to serve your meats dry so people can taste the flavor and taste the juiciness in there. Dry just means no sauce. Uh, and when it comes to fall off the bone, if it's fallen off the bone and falling apart in your hands, it's just overcooked. Uh, so if you go travel through the South, you travel through the uh, Carolinas, and you travel through Texas, uh, and you have ribs, and they're, they're, they're a little bit of a chew to them, they call it. So that's what you want. You just want just a little bit of a bite before it comes off the bone, and you want to be able to not have it just fall apart and disintegrate when you cut it. That's awesome. awesome. Let's yeah. get a look at that. Yeah, we can take a look, and I want to take a quick bite of this because it looks yeah, really it. good, and I haven't had lunch yet, so this is perfect. <laughs> So Someone said, try. best beer, best barbecue, best food. You guys have a rough job. <laughs> <laughs> I'd agree. Yeah, this is an awesome piece of meat here. It tastes just enough smokiness, and the, it's a juicy, big Thick, piece yeah. of meat. Perfectly tender, not too yeah. fall off the bone. That's awesome. That's Let, great. That's a great segue into your sauces. Can you explain yeah. a little bit about sure. that? Sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, we have uh, four sauces. Here's the gold barbecue sauce. Uh, this is a recipe I uh, we will call it procured from a good friend of mine in the Carolinas named Gary Seymour. Uh, it's an old family recipe, so it is a mustard-based barbecue sauce. Uh, and I can't give out the recipe even though Gary gave it to me once. Uh, but it hit, does have a little bit of a zing to it because of the mustard uh, and a little bit of hint of thyme at the end. Okay. This is our hot. This is a southwestern style chipotle sauce. Uh, it's got a little bit of heat and uh, just a touch of sweet right at the end. Our sweet sauce is more of a traditional Kansas City style ketchup based barbecue sauce. It's got no heat, uh, but it's what you would think of when you get something uh, out of a container, out of a jar, which uh, is kind of a traditional knowledge of, of barbecue sauce. Lastly, but definitely not least, is the North Carolina style vinegar sauce. It's basically just apple cider vinegar and a little bit of cayenne and a touch of sweetness. Uh, and that goes great on pork. So all of these go great and they're all interchangeable on everything. Uh, we actually also have a uh, white barbecue sauce here uh, that you can get upon request uh, at Backyard Barbecue. And it goes great with chicken, which it traditionally uh, is known for. Uh, but we love it with like our bone-in uh, uh, beef rib uh, or our, our uh, burnt ends. Yeah, you can take us through a little bit more here. We got this place, sure. so now we got this whole other setup here. Yeah. Uh, phase two of the, the barbecue smorgasbord. We got, All right, so. we'll roll through it. Uh, this is our mac and cheese. Uh, uh, the topping on there is a cheddar crumb crust. Uh, this is a smoked uh, kielbasa right here. Uh, and then this right here is our half chicken. Uh, pickled vegetables, pickled in-house. Uh, we got uh, Denise's recipe on the menu, uh, uh, D's spicy uh, kielbasa and pineapple meat candy. Uh, and then over here we have our sliced brisket. Uh, we have our uh, 3 two, one uh, wings, which means three hours brined, two hours smoked, and one minute fr flash fried. Uh, and that's a dry rub on that. 
our grilled asparagus. This is a big chunk of our pulled pork. This is our beef rib, uh, brontosaurus rib. Uh, and then here's our burnt ends. Uh, we do our burnt ends, as you can probably see here, uh, are a little bit larger than you're used to seeing. So what we do is we include a little bit of the flat and a little bit of the, um, uh, the, the top of the, uh, the brisket. Uh, and then, yeah, and then we have our, uh, our fries, uh, house-made fries, house-made cornbread with a uh, whiskey butter. Right. And that's it for these two trays. Yeah. Uh, sorry, point and flat is what I meant to say on the brisket. Oh, that's all right. We also do a house-made uh, salmon, smoked salmon. It's a cold smoke. So we cure it for, I think it's about four and a half, five days now because we're getting pretty thick fillets of salmon. Uh, and then we cold smoke it with applewood and some of the bourbon barrels. We add the applewood for a little bit more sweetness on that one. Sure. Our pork cracklings are new as of this year. Uh, they are fresh out of the fryer. They're still crackled. It's like a bowl of Rice Krispies. And we serve that with a tomatillo salsa. And then last but definitely not least, we got a little bit of dessert item uh, yeah. right now for the fall, uh, which is our pumpkin bread pudding. And that's with a whiskey caramel sauce. That sounds amazing. So come in for Halloween and have some pumpkin bread pudding. So I'm going to do this for justice and have some more while it's hot. Try out the brisket and some of the pulled pork here. Um, before we go into the kitchen, you can show us around a little bit sure. here as well. Tell us about that brisket. First reaction. The brisket is awesome. Yeah, it's... Well, some of it that we've tried has been a little more loose and kind of falls apart. Um, this one has a nice texture to it. It's nice and heavy, but it has that juicy, you can taste the meat in it, the rendered fat, I mean, sorry, um, and that nice bark on it, which, um, what kind of uh, seasoning do you use on that? Is that a rub? It's a salt and pepper. You know, we, so, take, a, we, we take a little bit of a, a road trip every year for barbecue. Mm -hmm. So we decide different ways to cook it because there's different ways to have barbecue. You go to Kansas City and the ribs will have sauce all over them. Sure. Uh, you go to uh, the Carolinas and you can barely find brisket. Mm -hmm. uh, you go to Texas and they are all about the brisket. So ours is actually modeled after my favorite barbecue uh, brisket of all time in Franklin Barbecue in, in Austin. Uh, and it's basically salt and pepper rub. Mm -hmm. You let the smoke do the work, you let the meat do the work, and we let the collagen break down. And when it does, it pulls it all together on its own. All you did was put a little salt and pepper on it awesome awesome and so what about the pulled pork is that the same the pulled pork is a little bit different it has a, a different rub on it uh, it's got a little bit of a uh, little bit of a brown sugar a little bit of uh, cayenne but not too much a little bit of uh, paprika uh, and salt and pepper uh, might be a couple other ingredients in there but I can't give everything sure, away sure. On, on, on live uh, exactly. live feed here Speaking of about secrets, tell us a little bit about your secret sauces that you can ask about. Yeah, so if, if you know about our secret sauces, which uh, hopefully all of our viewers will now, uh, you can come in and ask for it. So every year we, we try to play around with a new sauce or two because it really does uh, change what people think about your barbecue because they're kind of making it themselves. Uh, so while we do have the traditional barbecue sauces that are made you know, with either ketchup or mustard base, we also make hot sauces now. So we have one called the Green Drag. And, and that's basically a, a green style sriracha sauce, which people like. It's not too strong, garlicky, uh, and, and a little bit of heat, not too, too much. Then we have the Magic Mike XXL. It's a little <laughs> bit of sweet and a little bit of heat. Uh, nice. There might be a little bit of a play on a movie, but I'm not too sure about the copyright infringements on that. <laughs> Uh, and then lastly, one of our bartenders here named Armani, uh, she spent time growing up in Mexico. And uh, she loves hot sauce. She's the girl who always carries around a jalapeno in her purse. And I know she's watching right now. So yeah, hi, Armani. she just commented. <laughs> Say hello. <laughs> so hi, this Armani. is Armani's revenge. She wants to make sure that it's super hot. She wants to make sure that you're going to sweat a little bit when she gives this one to you. So hi, Armani. Thanks for the great idea on the hot sauce. <laughs> yeah, and with that, you, mentioned, it. you mentioned that some of uh, your travels have kind of inspired some of the food that you've made. Do you want to talk yeah. about that? Absolutely. Uh, you know, like I mentioned before, when we went to Texas, we, we had had great brisket our briskets modeled after that uh, our wings when we went to Memphis they're modeled right after the ones that we had uh, I think it was pig on veal it was really awesome and they served chicken legs it was the same kind of style uh, the burnt ends are, are kind of loosely interpreted from what we had in Kansas City uh, and, and uh, northern Texas area in Oklahoma uh, but we did it our way just a little bit different with a piece of the uh, the flat and the point our beef ribs I think they're just something that's really popular in all Beef barbecue spots. Right 
usually they're uh, yeah usually restaurants will do it like only on Fridays because the thing is is that you have to cook this huge rack and the yield on them isn't that big but we figured out a way that we can serve these every single day and we smoke them overnight every night all this is smoked overnight uh, every night in our smoker uh, but the idea behind all of it is just picking from our favorite barbecue spots the pulled pork is definitely a North Carolina style uh, with a little bit of vinegar on it as it comes out uh, and no heat at all, no sauce at all. It's just pure and just, just love. Uh, the rest of it is just recipes I've, I've kind of brought along uh, throughout my career uh, being a chef. Great. That's great. Can you tell us a little bit about the cocktails you have in front of you? Yeah, sure. Um, this one, uh, Georgia on my mind right here. No way. Uh, is, all of our cocktails are named after classic barbecue songs. Uh, sorry, <laughs> blue songs. <laughs> barbecue hey, oh, too. Pretty yeah. much barbecue, yeah. right? Uh, so barbecue this one songs. is uh, bourbon, peach, and basil. Uh, this one right here is our Stevie Ray. It might be the only drink on our menu that's made it through since our very first year. Uh, that's Tito's, jalapeno, lemon, and cucumber. Yum. Uh, so it's nice and light, super refreshing year-round. Uh, and it grows great with barbecue because it, it is something that will kind of cool your palate a little bit. Uh, and then last but definitely not least is still a fool. This is mezcal, raspberry muddled, simple syrup, and a little bit of citrus and a twist on top. Excellent. And so you gave us a rundown of all of this great food here. Um, I tried some of it. I, I'm gonna. Um, I just did try the pulled pork, and you could definitely taste the spice and how uh, you have a little bit of more spicy elements of the rub there. It's really good. Um, so we can try a bunch of this, the rest of this stuff later. Sure. We don't have a, enough time to go through it. I know you're a busy guy. You got to get back to work. So uh, why don't you show us through the kitchen, you guys? I've kind of an, I don't want to say unconventional setup, but a little bit different than a lot of the other places we've been visiting. Absolutely. Where you have an in-house smoker, so let's go in the kitchen yeah. and check yeah, that let's out. let's check it out. Side so Definitely. you can kind of see it. So this is our smoker. This is a cook shack smoker. What it is is an electric assist. So there's a lot of ways to make barbecue. Uh, uh, what you guys were talking about, the, the indirect, the direct. Um, there's all sorts of different kinds. And here in downtown Nantucket, there was no way they were going to let us have what they call a stick burner uh, sitting out back. You know, those side by side, those big mm -hmm. cast iron monsters, you know. Uh, those are the traditional way to make barbecue. And they have been for decades and, and hundreds of years uh, but what we needed to do is we need to figure out a way to smoke meats here without creating a ton of smoke so what we have here is we have a fully enclosed unit you can think about it like a refrigerator so what it does is it keeps the smoke that's being created inside this for a lot longer than you would in a traditional side-by-side -side smoker so that way it actually hits the meat more and more and more before it comes out this little tiny chimney in the back there so that's where the smoke is coming out, and yeah. it's how you kind of fight the tough Nantucket regulations on smoke. Yeah, and I think most most larger cities and downtown areas, definitely historic districts, are going to do the same. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think this is kind of a way for barbecue restaurants can, that can be in a downtown uh, area anywhere. So uh, even if Nantucket wasn't uh, uh, strict on it, uh, everybody would be, I think. Yeah. Uh, so this is our bad boy. It smokes up to 300 pounds at a time. Uh, we smoke all of our meats overnight that are the larger cuts like the brisket, the whole pork, uh, and even the beef ribs that we, we just looked at over there. So right now we started uh, some ribs in here this morning about three hours ago or so, Mike? Yeah, about three hours or so ago. So it's still got some smoke going on. Yeah, let's check it out. So we'll try to be careful and not have you smell like uh, ribs all day. That's all right. My dog loves it when I come home. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite member of the house. Oh yeah. Yeah, so here's our ribs. They're about ready to get just a little touch of glaze on them. But right now they're that traditional dry rub and you can actually smell that smoke come out. Yeah, you can. It isn't, it isn't as strong as like a, a hickory uh, and it isn't as sweet as like a straight apple wood uh, or a peach. So right now I think it's a, it's a perfect time for us to like hit that with just a touch of glaze and let it finish off for the next 30 minutes in there and call it done. When you see the ribs start to show right here and they start to pop out like a good quarter inch, you can tell they're just about there. Because you want to be able to tug on them a little bit, but you don't want the, bo the bone to come out. So they got about a half hour left before they totally are ready to rock. And the wood's at the bottom there, correct? Yeah, the wood comes in and goes right through the bottom of there and catches all of the drippings that come out in the bottom. 
There it is. All right. Yeah, you, you can smell. see that clean burn down there. Mm -hmm. yeah. You can smell the wood, too. It smells yeah. really good. So. It only takes about 8 ounces or 10 ounces of wood to smoke about 200 pounds of meat. So it's actually good for the environment, too. You're not releasing a lot of carcinogens into the air. All right. Thanks for showing us. Hi. Our pleasure. Yeah. Okay. I see those freshly cut fries right over here. That's where they yeah. start yeah. out. Delicious. All right. Thanks for showing right, us yeah. inside. Our Very pleasure. Nice Thank you. And you can see on the back of the shirt, we only smoke the good stuff. Go. That's, That's it. That's a guarantee? That's a guarantee. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Headed back out in the dining room now at Backyard Barbecue in Nantucket. We got this mean spread to finish up here. Yes. So some of the few takeaways we've got from this video is the unique way in which you smoke your wood, your commitment to smoking the good stuff and bringing in local quality meats. And you also have some interesting takes on smoked salmon. You got dessert. So it's not just barbecue. No, you no. You also it's have your cocktails. cocktails, your special sauce. So you really put your neat yep. stamp and signature on that traditional barbecue that you love from those different places that you inspire. Yeah, well, thank you very much. We do uh, we do appreciate you coming down, and uh, thanks for including us in the top ten. We really appreciate it. All right, thanks everyone awesome. for watching. Thanks We're gonna for sign right. off. Thank you.